I'm going to do a video uh, answering a question that comes up a lot and that is why do I use a joiner and what is a joiner used for? Some people think it's to um, essentially replace a planer and or vice versa. Let's take for instance a rough cut piece of lumber. If you were to pass that through the planer you're really not going to get a very good surface on the other side because of the undulating, uneven surface that you're referencing on the planer bed. However, if you have a flat surface, a flat, smooth surface, and you were to take this surface and put this on the planer bed and run it through, you're going to get a nice, smooth surface that's going to be parallel with this surface. If this surface that you're running on the planer bed has bumps and waves and all that stuff, is crooked, is cupped, is warped, is twisted, the planer isn't going to help you. It's going to get it down to a, a um, consistent thickness, but if your goal is to have a flat board, a non-twisted board, a board that doesn't have cup in it, you're not going to get that result. So, if you're out there and you're wondering, what do I use these tools for? I'm going to kind of go over some of the, the key points about mainly the jointer. The jointer is a tool that I use every day in my shop. And it's a tool that I use more than any other, besides my table saw, I use it more than any other tool. The reason I say that I use it more than any other tool is because... Um, machine, let's just say that, not necessarily tool, uh, machine. In conjunction with the table saw, it is a necessary machine for me to clean up edges. Let's take, for instance, this edge. This edge right here is, is pretty nasty. Um, as you can see, coming from the factory, or let's call it the you know, you go to the, the building yard and you, um, you, you you grab some boards. And this is what you're, you're getting, right? You're getting rough lumber. Now, sometimes it's got a straight line on it, which means that it's basically got a smoother surface on one side than it does the other. However, this particular case, this supposed to be a straight line piece. It actually wasn't. It actually has more rough than um, typical. So this piece right here, this part, is supposed to be straight line and it's supposed to be clean. In other words, you're, you should be able to take this to your table saw and rip. So, um, why am I even, you know, going to the trouble to, of explaining this and, you know, showing people what the purpose of the joiner is? Because I use it so much that um, the questions come up, and I'm sure there are going to be more and more questions. Um, and I don't think there's a, a lot of people out there that really understand the uses of a jointer and why they're so important. And a lot of production shops, they don't even have jointers. So it's crazy to me to think that um, when you go into production shops, they'll take this finish just right off the saw, saw blade marks and everything, and they'll put this on expensive cabinetry and they won't even bother cleaning this up so I don't work that way and you know what ultimately when the finish goes on if I go into my kitchen right now which is a builder kitchen um, I could show you all the areas where all these saw marks are and you can see them under the stain you know they try to sand them I'm sure at some point but it doesn't work that well so you get marks everywhere it's just not a very good um, thing to do in my opinion so this is why I'm kind of making a video on why I love the joiner and why the joiner to me is like the, one of the most essential tools in my shop. The other uh, purpose of a jointer, so we're talking about the edges and we're talking about making everything nice and clean, but what happens if you have a board that is uh, cupped or twisted? The only way to uh, straighten that board is to actually run it on the jointer and get that piece flat. So if this piece, if you look at this guy right here, and you were to um, move it around, and, it, and let's say that it had a, uh, 
you know, a twist to it where it was rocking or maybe the um, center part was raised up and had a bow, you know. You could push down and you could flatten it, but what, you know, what if this was a um, part for a door, right? And it, it couldn't be curved. You had to have this be dead flat because the doors, you know, you can't have twisted doors. Maybe you're doing, um, you know, any kind of furniture that, you know, nice furniture. You're gonna want references you're going to want nice flat reference boards. So in order to get these pieces perfectly flat, you're going to run this on the jointer face down, and then you're going to flatten this piece out. Once this gets flattened out, then you can take it to the planer and run this opposite side. So you're going to have a smooth, completely flat surface, and then you're going to take it to the planer and then create a parallel surface that's going to be just as flat and straight as the bottom. That's how you work with the two combined. And not everybody has a planer and not everybody has a jointer. But if you're going to be doing a lot of this work, it's, I think that it's wise to um, get uh, a jointer first and then maybe work towards getting a planer. Um, you can do a lot of things with a jointer and um, you, know, you don't necessarily need to have a, pl a planer, but it does make it nice, especially if you're doing furniture, right? You're starting with thicker material and you need to create thinner material. Um, there's a lot of uses for it, so it'd be a good tool to have. Uh, but this particular video, I just want to focus on the jointer. So when I run these boards, I always make sure that the boards are straight and they're smooth and everything. And that's achieved with the jointer. So this first part of this job, I'm going to need to clean up these edges because I can't run these on the table saw rip fence very effectively. So I want to make sure that this is smooth and flat and straight. So the joiner is my tip. Now, when I come over here to the joiner, now I, I, I don't know if everybody knows what a joiner, you know, looks like. I, I think there's a lot of people that probably do know. However, I don't, I don't know for sure. Um, this is a jointer. So there are bench top joiners, little four inch ones, and there are um, massive ones. This is an eight inch joiner, and this actually has an upgraded uh, Beard Shelix carbide um, head on it, but uh, it didn't come with that. It came with a straight knife um, head. I just changed it, you know, um, shortly after I got the, the machine. Um, so this is going back, this is a DJ20, and um, this was uh, purchased, geez, back in, I think it was around 2002 or something. Um, I, had a, I had a six inch jointer, my first six inch jointer was a Harbor Freight model, and I got that for $199. And as soon as I got it home, I realized that um, the blades were so bad on it, they went dull so fast. I got carbide tipped ones. And I'll tell you what, that Harbor Freight joiner, man, it was actually pretty good considering uh, once I got those carbide tip blades, knives on it, the thing worked really well. So I was pretty impressed with that. However, it shortly blew the motor while I was using it. It actually, the motor caught fire. And so I um, unplugged it and got rid of that thing, but I kept the, the um, carbide knives, and then I ended up getting a Delta professional six inch jointer, the one I think they had it at, at Lowe's, and I think that was $500, and, but that never really worked so well. Um, the Harbor Freight actually worked better. Um, it straightened boards better um, than the Delta did, but however, once I started doing um, big jobs, um, a lot of um, large, solid wood construction um, jobs, big cabinets with uh, big face frames. I started realizing I needed a long bed joiner. So then I went and um, I actually sold the, the little six inch Delta and I got the DJ20 parallelogram uh, joiner. And um, it's, this is a really, really nice joiner. Once I got this, I realized there's two things. One is the straight knives. They're, they're okay, um, but you can have tear out, right, with straight knives a lot easier than you can with the, the helical head. So 
it was not too long after I got this that I got the um, helical beard helix helical head on it, and I mean, the, it, it's just night and day. It is unbelievable the finish you get with that helical. It also it doesn't need to be changed much. I mean, this thing has gone. I haven't changed the knives, and this is. I mean, we're talking like serious time here, and I've never rotated the inserts, these carbide inserts. So this guy right here has got all these little carbide inserts, right? And I have not one time changed them since I've had this machine, um, since I've had this uh, head on here. Uh, the only thing I've done to this actual machine is I put a, um, a uh, link belt in this, uh, but that was, you know, for other purposes, just to make it smooth and, um, you know, easy and all that stuff. But once I change this head, I haven't touched it. So what I do is I just move my fence every now and again, and it creates a new spot, right? Because mostly I'm edge joining, so it's three quarters of an inch or it's one inch thick, whatever. Um, most every time that I run this, it's edge joining. If I need to flatten a piece, I'll push this all the way back to get the full eight inch width. And um, you know that's the only time that I'm using all eight inches of this. Normally, it's just that much of it. I can rotate or I can position the fence, you know, if you find your, you know, your blades aren't quite so sharp, just move the fence just to kind of create an even wear situation. You know, you're, you don't have to change out your knives because that one location is dull. Just move your fence and then you're good to go. So when you run the um, pieces, there's not too much to think about. I mean, it's it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. I just like to take the board and I, I like to just um, sight down it to see, you know, what it looks like. It's a concave surface. I want to run this part first and I, I'm not going to run the middle part and I'm going to go to the very end and I'm going to start running that part too. So I'll take a little off here and it's going to miss here. I'll take a little off there and eventually I'll take enough off the ends that it comes down to this part and then eventually it'll make a straight line and you're going to be able to get that nice straight edge. Now the thick, the deeper the cut, the easier or the quicker it's going to be to get all that material removed. But I don't like to take massive deep, deep, deep cuts because it's just not as good of a finish. Plus it's a lot of material wasted. So if you, if you take more than, um, I would say like a 30 second, um, that's a significant amount. You don't need to take that much off. So you're trying to save material um, unnecessarily. You're removing a lot of material if you take off more. So just try to take off a minimal amount and um, just run these boards through and eventually you'll end up with a straight edge. Now again, if you want to make it faster, just take a little bit more off. So you can loosen the table and drop this, this part here that's how you're going to take more material off. Um, this is a fixed table. This You don't adjust this. Uh, once you adjust it originally, and that's basically to the um, top side of this cutter, it's supposed to be exactly what um, the surface is cutting at. So if you take a straight edge and you run it, you should literally be kissing that knife. Um, I mean, it's perfectly in line with the top um, cut on this. So as you run this through, you're not getting snipe. Um, if you are getting snipe on your joiner, that means that your uh, outfeed table is set too low. Um, because when you let this thing, you know, as you feed the board through, if it drops down and you get snipe, your outfeed table is too low. And if you, conversely, if you push it through and you bind, you actually hit the front edge of your table, it's too high. So that's the thing. You want this table to be absolutely perfectly flush in line with the top of the cutter, the rotation, so that it's the same height perfectly. Um, and you do that in the same way with the um, adjustments, up or down. Um, but once you have that fixed, fixed, it's, you, you don't touch it. You leave it alone. Things, the thing about the, um, the jointer is that they're a little bit confusing. To some people because they don't get how it works um, and it's kind of like a planer a hand plane you know a big you know hand plane if you've got um, 
if you've got one, you don't really understand how the thing works. Essentially, it's, it's just, it's there to create a, a straight reference point. Let me say that if you don't feed the board with enough pressure in the right position, you could end up with um, bowed pieces. Um, so they're, if they're not straight, you, you, you might have an issue where you're um, pushing down too hard on this side and or if the piece is thin and it's got a little bit of a bow to it and you're pushing down real hard on it, you could create an actual false straight edge, right? I think this is a real good example. Okay, this board here um, is not straight. Look, let's look at this board and let's look at the, um, the gap right there where the, uh, you can see like a shadow. That, that means that the board has a little bit of a, a curve to it. If it was perfectly flat, you wouldn't see any shadows, right? It would be just completely um, flat like it is here. See how it, there's no gaps there? Now, if you take this board and you were to joint it and you, you kept coming out with a curve, like it's just the same way every time. Chances are you're pushing down too hard. This is a really common mistake because it's really easy to do and it doesn't take much to, to um, mess it up. So if you're really just not quite paying attention, this could happen really easily. Um, let me show you. If I take this board and I push down and I'm gonna joint it, right? So I wanna make sure that it's tight to the table and I, and I wanna make sure that I'm pushing firmly so that it, I don't lose control of the board. So what I'm doing is actually pushing down. So what is that going to mean? That means that as soon as I release it, that spring is going to come right back up and that board is just going to spring right back up into its old position. If I take the board and I don't push down, like see, if I don't push down, it's not going to, I'm not going to create that false straight point. It's going to keep that curve. Then it's going to take off more material here and less material where it's curved to create a straight surface. And then, now, how do you do that on the joiner? Well, you take it essentially and instead of pushing down real hard, you push up against the fence, mostly. Um, push down a little bit where it's flat at the front and then as you run it through, you're going to put more pressure on that front leading edge because it's going to be um, on that um, other table over there and you're going to put more pressure against the fence so you're pushing a little bit not so much pushing down you're just going to guide the piece so as you run it I'm just going to push this thing through like that and I'm not going to be putting much pressure at all on it I'm just going to let the tool do the job you have to put a little pressure on it but mostly it's going to be towards the fence and not so much down. And then as you get through, that's it. Uh, I like to use uh, grippy gloves for pretty much everything that I do. I know it's um, some people are scared to wear gloves around and if you don't feel comfortable, um, you know, do what's comfortable to you. I, I feel like it's uh, necessary. Okay, so right now you can clearly see that's a pretty significant bow. I'm gonna run it through pushing down hard. finish is so nice right that is just beautiful so completely smooth and absolutely 90 degrees right however let's check this I'm sure it was good I just ran it through the joiner the piece must be completely straight let's see if it's straight uh oh what is this how could that possibly be exactly 
the same way as it just was before I ran it. That makes no sense. This piece is still curved. Look at that. So I, I'm using a joiner. That piece should be completely flat and it could be straight, but instead I have that bow still. So what could have possibly happened? My downward pressure uh, was too great and it flattened out before I ran it through. So then it just springed right back up. This is my point. Um, this is what happens with the planer. So if you run it through a planer, you're, you're, you're compressing the piece, right? And the piece is literally being squashed and you're creating a parallel surface. But when you let it go, that parallel surface just goes up, right? It follows the curve, the contour. So this is exactly what happens with a um, planer. And uh, this is one of these things where um, you really need to be focusing on how you're feeding these things through. Another thing I'm just gonna show you quickly, I'm gonna point out is the grain direction. So I'm going the wrong grain direction, but look at the clean cut. I mean, you don't get any cleaner than this. So bad grain, wrong grain direction, but yet that piece is, there's no tear out. Well, that's because of the Beard Shilix head. If you were going with a straight knife, most likely I would have some severe tear out right there. Um, this whole board is going in the wrong direction. I want to be going in this direction. So I want that grain to be going downhill as I run it. Okay. Now, since I ran it through one way, pushing down too hard, now I'm going to run it through without pushing down and I'm going to show you how straight you get it. So it's going to be really hard to, to show this on the camera, the pressure that I'm putting on it, but hopefully you can, you can see it. Um, it's just one of those things. Definitely it's hard to show and I'm going to do my best. I just ran that thing through. Okay, so touching only essentially the front and the back, trying to keep this top or this middle part from touching as I'm running it through. It's, it's a difficult thing to do, but it's a necessary thing to do. And as you run this thing across, you'll see how nice and straight that is. There is no gap and I'm tight all the way down and there's no curve whatsoever. The only way to do that is if you don't put too much pressure down. I mean, I mean like any pressure in this center section. Um, now, of course, this is just with thin boards, right? That have um, flexibility to them. Really tall boards, they're rigid. They're not gonna do this as much. However, if it was a really long board, maybe, but you're not gonna joint, you know, 14 foot long boards. So pretty much eight foot long, you know, 10 foot long, whatever, that's good. Um, but this particular board, this is only like an inch and a quarter tall piece. And hopefully you guys found um, this video helpful and useful. Um, there's a lot of features on the jointer uh, that, you know, obviously there's so many things that I could cover. Um, I don't move the fence much out of position from 90 degrees. That's, an, that's another thing you can, you can joint um, at angles. So if you needed to, let's say, um, joint a piece and it needed to be slightly um, at an angle, you could do that as well. Um, there's a lot of different things you could do. You could even make rabbits with these. However, that's not something that I typically do. Um, you could take the guards off if you really wanted to make um, a wider, you know, running a wide board through here. You could do that as well. But again, these are things I don't typically do, but um, this is something I do every day. So 
Let me know if you have any questions and I uh, appreciate it. Thanks. Okay, so I showed you how to straighten this board that was uh, cupped. Not too badly, but that's nice and straight now. Let me show you how to take that nasty edge and clean that up. That showed you earlier. It's really bad. Actually, this edge is pretty nasty, so we could either take a deeper cut or just take more cuts. of having a joiner now these edges I mean I, I can't really say you know as far as what you're building but if you're looking to build like furniture right the goal is to have joints that are nice and tight so that you can join you know let's say you were building a, a, um, a raised panel door let's just say and you needed to join the solid wood pieces to make a big panel well this is the way you get really good joints right using a joiner you can use a hand joiner a hand plane like a jack plane or something if you're familiar with those but if you have machinery this is your best bet ripping it is good but it's not it's not excellent for sure but um, in some cases it can do a really good job typically to get results like this you're gonna need to use a joiner so if you have any inclination to want to make uh, furniture using, you know, solid wood, you're probably going to want to get a joiner. That's my recommendation. Um, okay, so I just wanted to make a short, you know, how to or why I have it video on the jointer. And if you have any questions or comments, just let me know. Um, I really appreciate the um, positive feedback that I've been getting on my videos, and I certainly... Um, encourage anybody to you know let me know what you guys are thinking what maybe you want to see and um, you know if I'm helping in any way please thumbs up the videos and subscribe to my channel I really appreciate it and uh, again thanks a lot and we'll see you on the next video